name Chris Rankin, the president of the uh, Lancaster Seminary Alumni Council. And on behalf of the council, we welcome you to this uh, town hall meeting. Uh, we had one in the summer uh, to learn a little bit about uh, the partnership between Lancaster and Moravian seminaries. And we wanted to continue to share information with you. And we plan to do that uh, uh, throughout this year as information becomes available. We want you to hear about it, to ask questions, and uh, just to be in, in dialogue. I think that's the best way to, uh, to let you know what's happening and so that uh, that wrong information is not uh, passed on. Uh, we might hear things and, and that's not always helpful, but it's great that we can hear from the leaders of, uh, of both Lancaster and Moravian seminaries. And so there are some familiar faces with us today, members of the Lancaster Seminary faculty. We thank you for joining us, uh, but also some guests uh, that we will learn more about uh, that come from Moravian Seminary. And so with that, I will now turn it over to uh, Dean Heather Vosick, who will open us uh, with a word of prayer. Heather. Thanks, Chris. It's good to, good to see everybody. I'm going to um, open us with a, a prayer that I offered at convocation earlier this year and one that I have offered at some of our um, Lancaster and Moravian board meetings. And this is a prayer from Willie Jennings after whiteness. And it's one that um, speaks to me in this moment of the world and institutional life. Um, and so with that, please join me, please join me in prayer. And this is called Building the New Babel. Let's try this again, but now with noise, a cacophony of voices that none of us can control. We need that destroying God who made all of this happen threw away our plans and sat down in our midst. You, God, speak to each of us. We can now only speak through you to one another and understand what and how to build with what stone and which wood, whose cloth, whose hand, which eye, whose feet, which arm, every mind, each hope, climbing higher. Nothing will be wasted, no one will be thrown away. Then we will say to one, as one, we have built together only what you wanted, what we desired to see, you in your home. May it be so, amen. Thank you, Heather and Chris for giving us our welcome. I want to welcome all of our LTS alumni who are joining us. My name is Amanda Manza. I serve as the Director of Alumni and Family Engagement at Moravian University, Moravian Seminary, and now LTS as well. And I'm excited to really be starting to meet all of our LTS alumni um, and really get started with some engagement activities with you all. So I'm glad that you're all able to join us. Um, as you will note, we are recording this session. So if you're ever talking to fellow alumni and they have questions, uh, we will have a recording of this that we can share with them. Um, so please let me know if you ever need that at any time. I'm sure we'll send it out to everybody as well. Before we jump into all of the updates and some question and answer, I just wanted to run through kind of what's going to happen this afternoon. Um, if everyone could first and foremost try to keep yourself muted while the presenters are speaking just to help cut down on the background noise, that would be much appreciated. Um, we're going to go through a couple presentations um, to get some updates on what's going on. So from Heather and Vanessa on the consolidation, some information from Jill Anderson, our uh, VP for development and alumni engagement, um, and also from President Brian Grigsby. And then we'll open it up for question and answer. Um, you'll be able to submit your questions via the chat box at the bottom, or you can raise your hand and we'll call on you to ask your question live as well. Um, feel free to submit your questions in the chat box throughout. If something pops into your head, you don't wanna forget about it, feel free to go ahead and put that into the chat box and then we will move through those as we go on for the day. All right. So I am gonna turn it over now without any further ado to Heather and Vanessa to give us a little bit of an update on what's going on with the consolidation. 
Thanks, Amanda. I, I will start and Vanessa and I will then um, tag team here as, as deans um, in this conversation. If you by any chance as an alum were part of the Lancaster Association meeting a few weeks ago, this will be some of the information that you heard there. Um, as we talk about a timeline for the consolidation and some of the current activities, I'm, I'm grateful, let me say, to be joined by faculty colleagues and administrative colleagues, both from Lancaster um, and from Moravia. And so as there are questions from folks, there's a really um, broad group of, of us who can answer questions about what's going on and how things are going. Let me talk a little bit first about uh, some background as a reminder for the, the work of the partnership between Lancaster and Moravian. Lancaster has been thinking for a number of years about the best way to pursue um, the most stable future. Lots of different options were included, were thought through um, by faculty and administration, were part of strategic plan work, including partnerships. Uh, the first conversation that took place between Moravian and Lancaster actually took place about three years ago. That wasn't the right time for either school, for partnership, but when those conversations kicked back off earlier this calendar year, um, there was more traction and, and we, we've ended up where we are now in, in partnership. So again, those conversations began again on a more formal timeline early this winter. We announced an exploratory period with the two institutions talking with representatives from, from Moravian University and Seminary and Lancaster. Um, and that took place late winter through very, very early summer. And that team included board, faculty, and staff from each institution. In June of this year, both boards, both the Lancaster Board and the Moravian Theological Seminary and the, the Joint Board at Moravian University, then college, um, approved the consolidation. And then the final approval took place, uh, the final approval to get started formally took place in July. Um, and that was granted by the Northern Province of the Moravian Church in North America. The university bylaws at Moravian University require that church connection and moving forward. Um, and that really kicked off the first part of consolidation. I've been talking recently about um, consolidation in terms of a, a zip up sweater or sweatshirt. Um, and if consolidation is the, the pro, is the zipping of the sweatshirt, we, we've really just started. We're a couple of inches from the bottom in a process that will take a number of years. There's certainly a, a sense by some or an expectation that that, um, that that July event changed everything instantaneously. Um, and that really kicked us off in beginning to think about how we knit together um, the two institutions to, to sit side by side in this work of theological education. You hear me using the work of consolidation. It's a little bit of a clunky word, but I use it and we use it in part because it is the language of the legal agreement. Uh, in the state of Pennsylvania, if two institutions merge, uh, they then are considered to have formed a new institution that can't grant degrees for two years. Um, and that's not what we want to do as we continue um, supporting the students who are in the pipeline. So we are technically consolidating, but partnership really much better names the, the approach that we are taking to this work. As I named consolidation is a, a process, not a point in time event. We have already begun to share resources. If you've driven by campus sometime recently, you will um, notice piles of dirt, gravel, and a, um, a backhoe or two. So working on making some needed facilities improvement and the Moravian University facilities team has been part of that. Faculty has, um, in the last hour, we spent time together as joint faculties beginning to think about uh, curricular work and our, and our shared commitments. And that's a process that will span a number of years. We both, they're good curricula in both places and we wanna make sure we take the best of each in, in forming something new or things that sit side by side. So consolidation is a, is a process, not a point in time event as we move forward. Part of the lengthiness of the process of consolidation is related to the variety of uh, regulatory and accrediting approvals that are needed in the process. So Lancaster, as you 
as you likely know, is accredited both by the Association of Theological Schools and the Middle States Commission on Higher Education. And we have already done a significant amount of work with each of those accreditors with more to come in terms of talking with them about the stages of this partnership and the execution of that. But we anticipate that those approvals as well as approvals from the state attorney general and the Department of Education will take, will take a number of years. Uh, to name some things you may have seen in communication, but I think are worth uh, restating. Um, we, we anticipate, expect that the names Lancaster Theological Seminary and Moravian Theological Seminary will, will persist in perpetuity. These are two important institutions with long histories and important constituencies and make sense to, to um, be in place going forward. LTS remaining a seminary of the United Church of Christ is part of the legal agreement, and so that won't change, even while Lancaster, and the same is true of Moravian, um, serves students and has served students from dozens of different denominations and traditions. Those sort of anchor uh, denominations are important for each institution. Uh, one of the things that, um, that Chris Rankin asked Vanessa and I to name for the Lancaster Association when we, when we gathered with that group earlier this month was how alumni and churches might be supportive. And let me share with you some of the types of things we shared there and, and ask the same. So one, one is to, to please ask questions along the way so that we can make sure we are answering those. Uh, we also cover your prayers in this time of transition. As you know from, from congregational and other institutional life, even good change um, takes work and can be hard on those involved at times. So we welcome your prayers for faculty, for students, for staff, for leadership as we do this work together. And as Lancaster shifts from being um, a standalone and independent seminary to part of, alongside Moravian Theological Seminary, um, a university ecology that is that is a culture shift and one we want to make sure we navigate carefully and well. Um, and uh, of course, um, another thing that the alumni base is really important um, in doing is um, helping make sure that those out there who are feeling a call or a nudge to ministry um, know that the seminary is is here um, to help in that discernment and, and then help equip and form students. And so please continue to to send students, uh, to send students our way. Let me let me pause there, Vanessa. Turn things over to you for additional comments and updates, um, and then we can move forward on the agenda. Actually, um, this is a good segue into um, Heather. Your last comment about please send students our way. We are still accepting students. We are still recruiting students, and we have uh, we're still excited that Diane Bogues um, is still our not only um, the Director of um, Admissions and Financial Aid, but she has a new title. Um, she is the Senior Director of Joint Seminary Enrollment and Financial Aid, and, and this will be uh, work across both seminaries. She will have one kind of imagine, um, uh, one foot in Bethlehem and one foot in Lancaster and uh, working with recruitment uh, with an ABLE um, admissions uh, support team uh, at both campuses. And so uh, we are still um, recruiting students. And um, with the pandemic, our, our enrollment numbers did drop here in Lancaster. We had uh, 15 um, Master of Divinity students this last term, but um, we certainly hope as people, as students get confidence um, and that now is the time to um, it's safely to return from their bunkers and uh, to go out into the world that um, the 2021-22 year uh, will be time to reconsider going to seminary. And I can say as part of the admissions committee here um, that we've uh, just this week uh, admitted two new students. And so that work continues and we certainly uh, want you to um, well, a lot of our students come from recommendations from alums, um, from pastors, uh, especially those who are alums. And so um, pastors and uh, community members uh, with the agencies, yes, please continue to um, send students uh, their names. You can go on the website and there's a, a button that they can um, click to uh, on either website on Moravian or 
uh, Lancaster to express their uh, interest in uh, applying to uh, either school. And so uh, we certainly want you to continue in that. Um, also want to um, say that our commitments, uh, Heather's already talked about ecumenism, that is very important to both schools and our commitments here at the seminary um, are very uh, important to us. Our directors of uh, United Methodist Studies and Presbyterian Studies um, are here to help those students with those ordination, those other uh, judicatory requirements that they must meet um, with our UU students, with um, other students. And so uh, keeping those partnerships strong, helping those students to navigate the process for ordination is very important to us here. Uh, and so um, if you have any questions about that or any concerns, um, please feel free to reach out to us or um, if there's uh, a question uh, about any of the staff or processes to, to help um, scholarships, uh, a lot of times both the Presbyterian and United Methodist um, directors have complained that there are all these scholarships out there and no students are applying for them. And so uh, we want to and also encourage those students to apply for those scholarships. Uh, and so support for those students who are, are not just UCC or Moravian. Uh, we also want to talk about um, the library. Um, the library is, we have over 300 plus patrons who have um, member or members of our library. Uh, currently, we've had some retirements, some staff retirements in the library, so we've had to close on Monday. Uh, but our uh, library, um, a seminary librarian has been hiring, has had some interviews, and we hope to have those positions filled soon and to be able to open on Mondays again. I know that's been an inconvenience for some people who um, regularly visit us on Monday. And we, again, hope to have our doors open at that time again. Um, also want to continue to um, encourage you, if you give to Lancaster, the money goes to Lancaster and it supports the student scholarships, it, it supports the programs, um, and uh, it supports our, our faculty and um, uh, all the, just the various the ways that we give back, that we are able to give back to the community. One of the ways we get a lot of calls for pulpit supply and so our students, if they are available, we share those opportunities with them to um, help fill those pulpit supplies. Our faculty go out and preach and teach and lecture at various places. Um, and so just uh, across the spectrum, um, there's a lot of work that we do to both give back to the community just as we receive from you. And so uh, with that, I uh, turn it over to back to Heather or Amanda. Thank you both Heather and Vanessa for that update. I'd now like to introduce uh, Jill Anderson, our Vice President for Development and Alumni Engagement. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm so delighted that you could join us today. Um, I wanted to share with you um, that as the Vice President of Development and Alumni Engagement, I have the privilege of leading a team of professionals who will help align the engagement interests and philanthropic goals with the needs of the students, faculty, and staff of the campus. Um, we are delighted to work with your community of dedicated alumni, generous supporters, and enthusiastic advocates. Honoring you starts with our commitment that the gifts that are made to LTS stay with LTS. So whether it's for scholarships, capital projects, endowments, um, programmatic support, we are committed to making sure that those gifts go towards the growth um, and the great programs that are happening in support of our students. Um, we are adhering to the donor bill of rights as outlined by the association of fundraising professionals um, it is a set of guidelines for us and for you um, that ensures that there is transparency in those communications and the expectations that you have regarding your philanthropic intentions um, and ensuring that we fulfill them we look forward to joining your community um, and harnessing the energy you share um, to benefit the seminary. Um, I am thrilled um, to be a partner with you, um, a partner with Vanessa and all of the faculty and staff at LTS. Um, I'm sure that we will continue to do great things. 
Um, I'm delighted to share with you um, that one of those great things is the continuation and successful closing of the Way Forward campaign. Um, we have exceeded our goal as far as programmatic support, um, and we're going to continue to raise funds for both endowments and capital projects on the campus. So we are really excited to be partners with you in fulfilling that. Um, another great thing that is happening that is right around the corner is the Lancaster County Community Foundation's Extraordinary Give Day. You're going to get information about that, and we're going to be sharing it out to the wider alumni community and donor community to participate in that day in support of Lancaster County as well as LTS. Um, I, as well as anyone on my, on my team, is available for any questions, concerns, comments. We look forward to your insight, your guidance, your advice, your suggestions. Um, we welcome them all. Uh, it is a lot of joy in the work that we do in supporting Lancaster Theological Seminary, um, and we look forward to a continued great partnership. Thank you, Joe. And last, I'd like to introduce the president of Moravian University, Moravian Theological Seminary, and Lancaster Theological Seminary, President Brian Grigsby. Hi, it's good to be with all of you. I am sorry for being late. I had a uh, lunch a dinner with my 92-year-old faculty mentor, uh, who I have uh, lunch with uh, twice a month, and uh, the time was short to get in between uh, that that lunch and um, and being with you but it, it does kind of show the commitment um, Moravian has to its faculty uh, people that are important uh, to them and making sure that they're still well and doing okay so um, I apologize I'm happy to be here uh, and be with you uh, these are trying times all of us are facing in higher ed right now. And the goal, I think, for all of us is uh, to realize we're on the same team and we're trying to preserve a, a really rich history of two institutions that continue to do really good mission work and serve humanity really well. And, um, and we want to do that even better. And I, I want to be the... Um, the best in class for uh, partnerships and consolidations. Uh, I want people to look at us and say that that was two organizations that did it right. So I appreciate all of you being here. I know how difficult this is and how trying it is. I can only imagine what it would be uh, being on your side as, as um, people talk about a, a new institution. Um, but I appreciate all the support and the help, and I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that any of you may have. Thank you, President Grigsby. So like we said, we're going to open it up for question and answer. You can submit your questions via the chat if you'd like to do that, or you can use the raise their hand function, and we can call on you to ask your question live to the group. Since there are no questions, can I ask, um, I see several alums, both recent and um, those who graduated a, a while ago, what are you doing now? And um, how has your seminary education helped you in what you're doing now? Michael, are you talking? You're muted if you are. Okay. I was talking to myself. <laughs> Um, but well, I'm, I'm across the street. I'm at Franklin and Marshall College now, um, working in res life and doing student affairs. So, uh, and I do a lot of work with the faith and meaning department here. So it's my seminary education has paid off for me in spades and I'm very thankful that I got to go to LTS. And it's nice seeing all my professors. Hi, all of y'all. I'm, I'm very thankful to see you today too. Um, quick thing, like this is my second time this has happened. The first Bible college I went to also went through a system like this, which is how I came to Pennsylvania at all. So um, it's interesting to, maybe I'm I'm either good or bad luck, I'm not sure, but like, <laughs> um, it's not, I'm glad that there will be a place called Langston the Theological Seminary after this. I'm glad that our doors are not closing, but there will be good education going on after this. So, um, and 
we have a great school here. So, and it's prepared me to do a lot of things and I'm really excited about that. So thank you. Thanks, Michael. And you were 2020? Anyone else with questions? You can put them in the chat. You can ask them live. I guess I do have a question. I guess like um, in terms of the kinds of conversations that we're having between the institutions, what, um, I guess what pedagogical things are we looking to maybe change or enhance in terms of the way we do education um, at both schools? I, I mean, I, I know that like, seminary and seminary, but I also know we have a really unique style at LTS and I'm not sure. I just, I'm wondering like how we're trying to bridge all that together, if, if we're able to talk about that at all. I might start there and here I, I'm happy to invite Dean Lovelace faculty colleagues into the conversation. I mean, we, this is the, the noon hour we spent today with shared faculty on Zoom, beginning exactly that kind of conversation, Michael, about um, shared commitments, things that we love about the curricula in which we teach and the institutions we love, so that those are on the table and part of moving forward. What, what I loved in, here, in being part of that conversation were hearing the, um, the similarities in, in some commitments in terms of uh, the kind of formation that happens each, each school, a commitment to some interdisciplinary work, to a kind of purposeful, not just classroom-based, but classroom and beyond um, formation and education. So I'm really hopeful and excited about those conversations. Um, faculty colleagues, anybody want to, um, want to chime in there. You did not know you would be invited to speak, but I want to give you space to do that if, if you've got things to add there. One of the ways that we started those joint faculty conversations today was to talk about what we really are proud of in our curriculum. And so as the Lancaster Seminary was talking about that, it ranged all the way from certain courses to the way that we do things. And so, you know, I think, Michael, we're beginning to share those kinds of commitments that we have in the Moravian faculty, seminary faculty did the same thing. So I'm, I'm really hopeful um, and we're really believing what uh, Heather and Vanessa are telling us is that what this will look like in the future is ours to figure out. So, I mean, I, I will share for myself that I feel a full partner in, the, in making those kind of decisions of what either the curriculum or these multiple curriculums are gonna be, you know? And so I, I've corrected several people that I've heard that have talked about the takeover because it's, that's, that's not the way it's not just the model, the it's not the legal model, but it's also, it's not the way that it's feeling particularly, you know, for me as a faculty member in terms of curriculum development. Um, so we're just getting those conversations started, but we're doing it in a way that allows us to talk about those things that really matter. And so it really helps us to hear from alums of what did you think you know, either here or somewhere in the future to really hear what do you think is, the, are those distinctives and what would you not, what do you not want us to lose? So we think we know what our charisms are, but for you to tell us that's helpful too. If I can push one thing, I think that it would be like, I love that our school's always done like a travel learn experience as a part of our curriculum and it, I mean, obviously it's supposed to be kind of like a, a high point in your time in seminary, but I think also too, like having done that really helped me integrate a lot of what I had kind of studied and practiced at school. Um, it made a lot of the classes and the coursework that we did uh, a, a little more tangible because it, it helps you um, reimagine the context for it. So um, as an alumni, if I can say one thing, I would 
highly encourage both schools to continue to investigate how we could do a travel learning experience for um, for most of our students, if not all of them, because I think that it's just such a formative process and it's such a good capstone to the program. Thanks, Paul. President Grisby, I think we have a question in the chat for you about eliminating one of the campuses in the future. Sure. And if so, is Franklin and Marshall interested in purchasing the Lancaster property? So that's, uh, we have no desire to eliminate a campus. In fact, we have desire to grow a campus. Um, we're, we're hoping to see uh, Lancaster as a branch campus of Moravian University offering multiple graduate degrees, much beyond the, the seminary degree. Um, we see data analytics, our Masters in Human Resources, our MBA, a variety of other uh, adult degree completion programs being offered and making it even more vibrant than it currently is. Um, the, the cost savings uh, comes in uh, not having duplicate staff uh, at both sites. So we, our hope of having uh, a campus at um, the Lancaster site gets us closer to Lidditz, so it uh, produces more Moravian interest and um, getting a, a campus up in Bethlehem for the UCC gets more interest in northern New Jersey and New York areas for getting um, education in the theological areas. So we, we are not in any way, shape, or form interested in eliminating a campus. We're, in li we're interested in growing the campuses. Franklin Marshall is interested in purchasing the property and has made that uh, abundantly clear. They do not want to have a seminary and they do not want to have graduate education. So they would purchase the property in a buyout situation that would end the seminary. Um, and that is not our interest in any way to do that. So this is kind of where I was uh, before about, uh, we, we wanna be together in this and grow this program uh, in, in unison, in partnership. Thank you. And Vanessa kind of answered this in the chat, but just so that everybody can hear it, there was a question about, consolidation and partnership and the kind of the difference between those. So Heather, Vanessa, do you guys want to comment on that? Uh, Heather already mentioned, but um, it's important that when we're talking about this consolidation or combination uh, that we recognize, I know merger is a term that people are familiar with. And as Heather said, it's not as clunky, uh, but uh, it's in terms of legalese, if we were to merge and become one institution and one fell swoop, then we would have had to uh, refrain from granting degrees for two years. And essentially we would have had to stop being uh, seminaries. Um, and so being doing a consolidation uh, allowed us to continue to operate um, independently to still be uh, degree granting institutions until we um, combined to be one gra uh, degree granting institution, but um, as Dr. Uh, President Grigsby said, on different campuses. Um, and so, uh, it, so we still, even though our legal term is consolidation, we also see this as a partnership that we are these um, st faculty, staff, constituents that are working together towards making this consolidation successful. Thank you. Um, a question about master's degrees and the number of credit hours being decreased. Is that correct? And why would that happen? I can talk a little bit about this um, in, in general. Um, and this, uh, so the Association of Theological Schools shifted the required minimum number of hours for master of divinity degrees in the, in the past handful of years. That means many schools thought about um, the needs of students, the needs of curriculum, and made a shift in credit hours. And Lancaster Theological Seminary is one of the schools that decreased the number of credit hours that are involved in the Master of Divinity degree. The degree still needed to um, provide for students, 
um, all of the required courses and um, competencies that a Master of Divinity degree offered. At, at Lancaster, students who are in traditions that require additional classes still take more credit hours than the minimum number of credit hours for things like biblical languages. That kind of credit hour structure um, is part of what the faculty, the joint faculty will be thinking about as we move forward. And actually was part of this noontime conversation today to think about the balance of integrative coursework, coursework in disciplines and practical coursework. Um, and there, as I think you can probably imagine our, our tensions and what, um, what are the things that we're able to offer to students as they travel through the program and how do we equip them to encounter things in the future. So the kind of practical coursework, spirituality kind of classes that I see um, coming into the comments, naming those things for us, as Dr. O'Brien has said, will be really helpful to have those on the table in the things as the faculties do their work together. Um, there was also a question somewhere in the, in the chat, and I'm not catching new questions as I've been speaking, but that talked about um, decreases in the number of students who are coming to seminary. Um, there, there have been shifts in the broader theological landscape about who is coming to seminary, at what age, for what purpose, and for what degree. Here's where being part of the Association of Theological Schools is really helpful in helping us track some of those trends. And things like paying attention to the core of the Master of Divinity degree while continuing to innovate in things like um, the Masters of Ministry and Leadership, um, Moravian has a similar two-year degree that meets different needs in the marketplace, meets students who are from traditions in which a Master of Divinity is not required is really important to the work. And so Lancaster has, has done some of that innovation. And again, that was part of the faculty's conversation um, an hour ago to make sure that we are um, being clear about the kind of offering and the kind of education that seminary offers to meet the needs of those going into the traditional kinds of ministries and, and more broadly. Um, folks who might, for example, want to work at FNM down the street and feel served well, um, like as Michael, as you've articulated by your seminary degree. Thank you, Heather. Uh, President yeah. Grigsby, I think you just oh, answered the question in here, but about maintaining both campuses and the cost savings with staff. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I can just speak to it. The, the benefits that Moravian Theological Seminary has by being attached to a large university is that they really just have a vice president and dean and some faculty. The facility staff handles everything at the, at the campus. They have one president, one vice president of advancement. You had replic you replicated that. Uh, you replicated all the costs at LTS that is currently covered by Moravian University for MTS. So through a merge, uh, you are not you're not adding another president's salary. You're saving the president's salary. You're saving the CFO's salary. You're saving the CIO's salary. Um, there's also four hundred thousand. Uh, working adults with just some uh, college degree, uh, college courses, but not a degree in your immediate area that no one is serving. And so Moravian University, if you can start thinking about LTS as a site for other graduate programs, uh, just like we have multiple graduate programs at the university, we can continue to serve that uh, a new, we can continue to serve the LTS community, but also serve uh, the greater Harrisburg area and others uh, out there. And that revenue will help uh, maintain the campus, will provide jobs, will provide people with other education opportunities that they haven't been served. Um, when I went, met with Barbara Altman, um, uh, Altman about uh, this, uh, she was happy that uh, Moravian University would be across the street from uh, F&M and that students could take graduate courses in uh, data analytics, in MBA and HR, in all sorts of other uh, master's degrees uh, seamlessly. So there's a lot of opportunity and um, 
but the cost savings is in the uh, administrative overhead that can be absorbed by the university. Thank you. Um, another question about the alternative ways that UCC uh, pastors can be ordained and is that affecting seminary admission numbers? Greg, go ahead. Sure, um, everything's affecting seminary admissions numbers. Um, I mean, yes, that affects seminary admissions numbers. It affects seminary admissions numbers that there aren't many full-time placements in mainline churches where people can expect to have the same lifestyle they used to have. It affects seminary uh, enrollment that not as many people are going to church as used to go to church. Um, it affects seminary enrollments that all the conferences around here have closed their church camps. I mean, everything affects seminary enrollment. And um, colleges are facing a lot of the same challenges and some different challenges, but there's a cliff in the number of 18 year olds um, that's gonna drop uh, over, over the next few years. And so what, what, I, what I would like to say about what's going on is that Lancaster has been trying really hard to adapt to a lot of these changes. For example, the weekend master divinity program, making education more acceptable to students. Um, uh, grant initiatives we've had to offer the Pennsylvania Academy of Ministry. And, you know, I can't speak as an expert to what Moravian's doing, but it looks to me uh, like what Moravian's doing is adapting to the same reality by finding out new markets and new needs for the kind of education that they provide and seeing our seminary as part of that. So um, it's definitely challenging for seminaries. Um, one question that came up a little earlier, I, I would like to say to the alums that I know, is um, the two seminary faculties. I, I hope you get to know the faculties members at Moravian soon. I think you'll be surprised how compatible they are in terms of their sense of vocation and their sense of themselves as teachers. Um, there would be a lot of possible combinations out there. I, I think the compatibility factor between our seminary and Moravian seminary is really, really strong. Thank you. Vanessa, I believe you had a follow-up to the credit reduction question. Did you want to comment on that? Um, I did. And actually, uh, Greg, thank you, because you just opened the way for me to answer that question. When you talk about um, all of those factors that are um, affecting the uh, decrease in enrollment, it's, and specifically to UCC, um, one of the other reasons that we reduced, and again, in terms of the ATS trend of reducing the credit hours was student debt, um, that students were incurring um, a huge amount of debt to get a master's degree um, that to earn an income or salary that wasn't going to allow them to pay that those loans back uh, because they weren't getting churches that were going to um, pay them a full salary. A lot of the pastors now are um, three quarters or half time and having to be bivocational and working uh, somewhere else full time uh, just to make um, uh, earn an income to retire, to go on vacation, to pay for children's colleges. And so that was another factor is just the amount of debt that um, going for four years and um, for 92 credit hours that that was having on the church. Uh, and so that was another thing we took into consideration. Thank you, Vanessa. There's a follow-up question. May, I, in may the... I follow up with that? Is that okay, Amanda? Yeah, go ahead, Julia. So if, if you're a Lancaster graduate and you've been out a while, you might find it interesting to go on our website and see what the curriculum looks like now. So it's really easy when you hear that the number of credits have been reduced to think about that it's only shrinkage. But what we did is we actually reimagined theological training when we came up with this curriculum design. And we really tried to take the feedback that our alums and our students have been giving us for ever about the desire for more practical application, the desire for more integration 
you know, they love the Bible and the history and all, but they needed to know how to use it. So we tried to build a curriculum that responded to some of those issues. And, and we tried to do that in a way that, that made a really solid degree, but allowed people to keep their jobs to, so that you could be bivocational while you were in seminary, as well as after. And we've had a wonderful grant project that we're pulling together where we studied bivocational ministry. And we've generated a lot of study about that and suggestions. And so we've learned a lot about it over the last, I would say, year. And all of that is our ways of trying to respond to what alums are telling us, to what the churches are telling us, what conference ministers are telling with us. So it's not just that it's a smaller curriculum, but it's a very different curriculum than it would have been uh, 10 years ago. Leo, I saw your hand up. You want to go yeah. ahead? You know, I want to point out the obvious that the, um, the reduction in credit hours happened long before there, were there was talk of consolidation. So the, the two issues are, are somewhat independent. And as, as Julia has said, um, it was motivated by several things. Um, putting them all together, it was how to deliver a more compact but integrated um, educational experience. And most seminaries have, have done the same thing. Thank you. There was a follow-up question on the staffing. Um, so if there is gonna be a single executive suite, how can we be assured that the distinctive natures of both denominations will be celebrated and retained? I would say that this has been a really important part of our um, thinking so far, knowing that um, histories are important in um, in and of themselves, but also in grounding futures, and that there are distinct identities for each seminary and, and fears of loss on both sides, that thinking about how we get to know one another's traditions, know one another. Um, I mean, Lee, Lee and Ann Thayer have been involved in thinking about planning with the Mercersburg Society some intentional conversations across the Moravian Pietist tradition and the German Reformed heritage of Lancaster Theological Seminary. So that at, even as those traditions shape the broad base of students who come to us, those distinctives are, are narrated and narrated well. Um, yeah, and, and some of this we share by being, being in spaces across campuses when um, Moravian Theological Seminary faculty joined the Hispanic um, Heritage Month celebration in Lancaster at the beginning of October, being in the chapel, being in the worship space was a meaningful way to, to step into a tradition um, and to learn that part of the identity. So this, this is important. This has been lots of the conversations that, that Jill Anderson and I have had and others have had of learning traditions. So we make sure we honor them both well. And Lee, I don't know if you wanna add any thoughts there. I know you were really early on thinking about the delight in conversation between traditions. Yeah, I, I, th I think there's no zeal on the part of anybody to um, melt down the traditions into one another into some sort of amorphous goop. I mean, we, we, we don't want to become Merceravians, um, but, but rather preserve the unique features of each tradition but in dialogue with one another so that there can be cross-fertilization without absorption. So it's, it's more like a rainbow coalition than a melting pot. And we recognize that, although as, as Greg said, there are significant overlaps and commonalities, including a commitment to ecumenism, there are still different histories which are visible in our common life. And those we, both sides want to preserve. Thank you. Judith, did yes. you have a question? Oh, we're not able to hear you, Judith.
We're not able to hear you. If you wanted to type it into the chat, we can certainly get it answered. All right. <laughs> we'll get that figured out. But uh, in the meantime, there was another question about the having two campuses that are pretty far apart and how does that work? Do students travel back and forth between the two campuses, faculty, that type of thing? Yeah, I'm happy. Let me talk a little bit about how that's happening now and how I envision it will happen in the future. Um, you heard me talk about the, and Julia and others about the work of thinking about the future of the curriculum. And that's that will be a several year process. So we don't know exactly what that will look like in the future. We have already started doing a little bit of cross registration between the campuses where it is possible. So a Lancaster student is taking Hebrew um, at Moravian. Um, now post pandemic and in a world where many classes are being offered in hybrid or online format, uh, cross registration doesn't necessarily require the drive up and down to 22 between Bethlehem and Lancaster. So some of that has started already. Um, we've had a little bit of guest lecturing by faculty and other classes just in the past handful of weeks. And I think we will think together, even as we have separate curricula while we figure out the future together, where there might be cross teaching possibilities. Um, we discovered just recently, we have a semester where two Old Testament faculty were each thinking about teaching an Isaiah class. Um, and so we know we will offer one Isaiah class and students from each campus will be able to to engage in that class. Um, so we, we are just figuring it out. Um, I, and so stay tuned and keep asking that question. And as we plan the new curriculum, we'll be able to tell you a little bit more logistically um, about, about how that works. I would add, just as I had um, added in the chat, um, and somewhat what Dr. O'Brien was already talking about in terms of the imagination and the creativity that um, went into not just our uh, master's programs, but also we have a doctor of ministry program that is a hybrid. Um, most of the uh, doctor of ministry courses are done online asynchronously. They come together for a week intensive twice a year, um, but we have students in Tennessee, in Chicago, uh, and other states. And so even um, within programs that we already have before the uh, combination that we've had students um, in our um, master's degree programs who uh, commute from uh, Maryland, from uh, Delaware, um, others who actually live here on campus and the residents um, that uh, take the time and during the, the day program, the day track of the program um, who are here. And so uh, commuting uh, to camp different campuses, um, I, that distance and especially with some of our entirely asynchronous online classes, um, the uh, Zoom and as um, Dr. Vasa was talking about sharing, um, being able to present in one another's classes um, has really opened up the distance uh, or rather has closed the distance. And so it's not as big a thing as it would have seemed two years ago. I'd like to also add that um, while it's not uncommon, uh, well, while it is new to Moravian University and Lancaster to have a, a branch campus, it is not new in higher ed. Um, when I was the provost at Shenandoah, I had three branch campuses. And when I was the provost at Centenary, uh, I had two branch campuses. Um, so change is hard uh, and, and getting our heads around what it means to think about our other campus at LTS and how we function there and what we're doing there um, for both institutions is, is difficult right now because it's, it's new. Um, but if you look at, you know, campuses like Northeastern, they have 11 branch campuses uh, as far as California, Boston to California. And so it does add a vibrancy uh, that the students are experiencing right now in that there's more conversation partners, uh, more students to be in conversation with and more faculty to be in conversation with than they had when they were a standalone. So I just offer up grace that it's going to be difficult. There are gonna be bumps in the road uh, but we're all trying to do the right thing here and preserve two very important historic um, institutions. 
Thank you. I don't see any other questions in the chat and we're coming up to the hour mark. But if anybody does have further questions, feel free to reach out to myself, to Heather, to Vanessa, to Jill. We certainly will get all of those questions answered as they arrive. And obviously any of the LTS staff and faculty would be happy to answer those as well as we move through this process. So I'd like to turn it over now to Chris Rankin to close us out with prayer. Well, thank you um, again, Amanda. Uh, and thank you to everyone who, uh, who uh, shared information with us today. And, and again, we will have uh, more town halls. Um, but in the meantime, as Amanda said, please reach out with any questions uh, that, that you might uh, have or that uh, if you know of someone who asks a question, point them to uh, someone at the seminary so that we can give uh, accurate information. Um, as, as we close, I wanna share with you the prayer that I uh, offered back in June to the Board of Trustees of Lancaster Seminary um, when they made the uh, decision uh, to approve the, the agreement to move forward with, with Moravian. And so uh, I thought I would offer that as we close this time together. So let us pray. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, we give you thanks for the many ways you have been a source of strength to the leaders in the past as they were faced with difficult decisions. Be with our leaders now as they are faced with important decisions about the future of our beloved institution. May your spirit be with us and may we catch the vision and share the joy may known to us in your son our savior jesus christ amen thank you chris and thanks to everyone for joining us today as chris said we'll continue to host these as we move through this process and we look forward to meeting all of you in the future and continuing the great work that everyone is doing at lts have a great day guys <laughs>